Decades of tension appear to be easing on the Korean Peninsula as the North and the South work on points that have been a source of conflict since the active war ended. John Yang reports. On the Korean Peninsula today, signs of progress from both sides. First from North Korea's state newsreader. Pyongyang announced it will resync its time zone with South Korea's starting Saturday. In 2015, they had set clocks 30 minutes behind Seoul. And South Korea said it will remove the loudspeakers blasting propaganda into the north. This just days after Friday's historic summit between South Korean President Moon Jae-in and North Korea's dictator Kim Jong-un. They met on South Korean territory in the demilitarized zone that separates the two nations. Today, Moon said this is just the start. We should make this moment an irreversible historical moment for the Korean Peninsula's peace and prosperity. But we have only put forward our first step. The two leaders also agreed to work toward a nuclear-free peninsula. South Korean officials say Kim told Moon that Pyongyang would shut down its nuclear testing site and offered to scrap the nuclear program altogether if the United States helps negotiate a formal end to the Korean War and pledges not to attack the North. Today, at an afternoon news conference with the Nigerian leader, President Trump cited Kim's promise to halt ballistic missile tests as a good sign. The United States has never been closer to potentially having something happen with respect to the Korean Peninsula that can get rid of the nuclear weapons. And Mr. Trump expanded on a morning tweet musing on the Korean DMZ as his possible preference for a summit location. Uh, there's something that I like about it because you're there. You're actually there, where if things work out, there's a great celebration to be had on the site, not in a third-party country. Yesterday, National Security Advisor John Bolton said the United States would insist that Kim give up his entire nuclear weapons and ballistic missile programs before making any concessions. Bolton cited Libya's 2003 disarmament as a model. Then Libyan leader Muammar Gaddafi was overthrown and killed in 2011 by rebels with U.S. backing. The Libyan program was much smaller, uh, but that was basically the agreement that we made. And uh, so we'll want to test North Korea in this first meeting for evidence that they have made that strategic decision. Bolton went on to detail how the North had broken its commitments before. But newly confirmed Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, who met with Kim four weeks ago, struck a more optimistic tone. My goal was to uh, try and identify if there was a real opportunity there. I believe there is. Last week, Defense Secretary James Mattis signaled the possibility of reducing the U.S. military presence on the Korean Peninsula. That part of the issues that we'll be discussing in the negotiations with our allies first and, of course, with North Korea. So uh, I think for right now, we just have to uh, go along with the process, have the negotiations, and not try to make preconditions. North Korea has long said the United States must pull its almost 29,000 troops from South Korea under any agreement. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm John Yang.